Hello, I'm Tom Hatzis with William Pink Floyd, if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are here with Psychedelic Renaissance Presents, and um, Mr. Floyd yesterday had, I believe it was the first talk uh, I've ever heard at any psychedelic conference to address um, uh, eight, uh, late 19th century trans. Uh, excuse me, uh, 19th century transcendentalism and psychedelics. Uh, would you mind uh, letting us know what uh, turned you on to that? Well, I was a young man in Venice, California, skating one day, and I skated into a bookstore, and there was this wonderful book that I found called The Hashish Eater by Fitzhugh Ludlow. It was illustrated by Sati and put together by Michael Horowitz of the uh, Fitzhugh Ludlow's library and also Tim Leary's archivist. Mm -hmm. And I sat down and read this, and I realized that here are these reports and this is pre arrowwood I mean, this is like 40 years ago. And I have kept that book ever since. I still have the original copy. But as the internet and everything unfolded, and I started reading more about the man, because the, it, it wasn't really accessible. You know, now there's a lot of information out there now. But I realized this guy was telling it as it was with what the effects of high levels of ingesting hashish, not smoking, but ingesting it, and he would ingest these vast amounts, and then he would write these reports that were of a person absolutely transported. And this, uh, he was friends with people such as Walt Whitman, Mark Twain, uh, the, literat the literary people, the time period, the Bohemians of New York, and he traveled all over, he knew Brigham Young, he did all kinds of things. I think we're Mitchell too, not Havelock Ellis as well, I think. Yes. I think he did. Yes. Cool. And he, you know, uh, he, uh, Bierstadt, you know the, the artist? I do not. Okay, so this gentleman actually ended up marrying uh, Fitzhugh's wife, they divorced, it was, you know, uh, one of those moments. As those Victorians are. As those Victorians <laughs> were, and then, <laughs> practice. A lot of them were serial monogamists. Uh, but they traveled around the West. Beerstadt painted and Mr. Ludlow wrote the journal about it. And it was beautiful. They traveled all through California, up through Yosemite, all the way up into Oregon. So is that almost what inspired you? Because the, the pieces in your version of the hashish eater, which I should have brought up here to show, um, they're quite remarkable. I mean, they're so striking. And I'm curious as to your medium as to what, what it is that you're actually working with. So, so this is, this is uh, I mentioned, I think I mentioned the artist Sati. Yeah. Okay, and he, his, one of his pieces was one, was one of the first posters I ever bought. It was called Ship of Fools. But he was a, okay, and he was a collagist in, in the school of Max Ernst. And through him, I decided to, do, to work with this medium. So up to the last few years ago, I did all of my work by hand with razor and stuff. Now I use Photoshop. And, but I take things out of books. I'm not downloading stuff off the, off, online, but I have like some of the, a lot of the illustrations from this book comes from a, from a volume, from uh, two volumes from 1849 that are German of illustrations of the Middle East and India. Really? Yeah. So the, I'd like to check that out when we have yeah, yeah, when you come over, yeah. The lithographs are fabulous. Okay, so what they had, they had a team of people go over, they had the artists sketch it out, and then they had the little guys do it, you know. And it's it's fabulous. The, the plates capture a world that is now gone entirely. Yeah. Okay. And there's the part of the magic. I have a lot of background in art. I was at an art college at the age of 12. Really? Yeah. Oh, I was shoved in the belly, you could tell. Was yeah, I was you know, what, ta talented and gifted for the, for the early 60s, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I went, to, I went to those schools and I learned a lot about the idea of color and the idea of aesthetics. And what I tried to bring to this piece was the aesthetics of, of Ludlow's vision. But also, some of the illustrations that I have in there are things that I experienced with high doses of hashish as well. 
And so they're kind of intertwined, you know, his yeah. visions, my visions. That's awesome. It's beautiful. So kind of that, that's perfect because the, the last question I wanted to ask you was, how, what do you feel that we can actually learn from the transcendentalists and, and the Fitzhugh Ludlows, the Thomas de Quincey's, the Coleridge's, the Alistair Crowley's, what can we actually learn from that so that, you know, for our modern day today? Okay, we have to understand that we are part of a stream of consciousness. This stream of consciousness goes back pre-Christianity. We're bringing it forward and there's like sports or, you know, this, I won't use the term freaks, but there's like uh, certain beings that emerge at a certain time to spark a revolution. Okay, mm -hmm. They're born at that moment. He was born in 1936, just before the Civil War, of course, and his flowering started a, a great flowering throughout New York and other parts of the country of young people trying hashish and everything. And there was a huge renaissance in literature around that. And he set the basic groundwork for trip reports. Mm -hmm. And just don't think of them as that, but think of them as a literary and spiritual journey. Does this make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. No, it's true because we call them trip reports. Right. But that it's that's like it's such a it doesn't even come close it's to describing what it is. It's flippant. Yes, that's the word. It's, it's rather flippant. It's rather flippant. <laughs> But the thing is, is that what we need to do now is write our own stories of this time period and of our experiences. Dress it up. Embellish it with the best words and the best images to convey the timeless moment that we've experienced. And we have to bring the infinite into the finite. And that's the way we can do it. I think we should leave it on that because that is a beautiful, beautiful way to end this. Thank you so much, Pink, for uh, taking the time to do this. Thank you. Uh